Okay, next patient is a 73 year old lady who has a background history of diabetes, hypertension, and newly diagnosed uh, pancreatic uh, and snake process tumor. Um, now he's presented to epigastric pain, weight loss, and inadequate pain uncontrolled on maximum opiates. This is CT scan, and she's booked for a US FNA uh, plus, plus C like plexus block. Good morning. Good morning. I think it just became good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, my job is to do a celiac uh, plexus neurolysis, uh, try to look at the ganglia. But before that, I, I have just introduced the scope and I want uh, uh, to focus on the scope. Just a very basic information for those who are new to EUS, see linear EUS if you are keeping your scope straight, mm -hmm. then the transducer faces the direction of your controls. Is it clear? So if the transducer is, if the controls are like this, the mm -hmm. transducer is anterior. Okay. If I want to make it posterior, I have to turn clockwise. If I have to turn it more anterior, I have to turn it anti-clockwise. So you want to see anterior structures go anti-clockwise. If you want to see posterior structures go po um, clockwise. Yeah? Very clear. So now I'm anterior. Mm -hmm. I want to see what we are seeing. Let's go in. Can you get the EUS picture? Are you getting it? Yes, we have EUS pictures. Okay. So I'm going in. I'm going in straight, so we should see the liver anteriorly, right? So yes. this is the liver, and here is my hepatic scope. Veins. Look at my controls, they are very straight. So this is the hepatic veins, IVC, and if I go a little more anti-clockwise, I see the hilum. You can see the hilum of the liver? Yes. yes. If we can show the Doppler, we will see the structures that are there at the hilum. Doppler, please. Here. So that is the portal vein, which has lit up just now. You can see the portal vein. Yes. Above that is the hepatic artery, the small narrow structure. And below the hugely dilated thing is the CBD. Freeze the frame, please. Freeze the frame. So this is our CHD, not CBD. Uh, if you measure it here, it looks dilated. It is 13.6 millimeters. So it's a dilated bile duct. So this is the anterior structures. Now, if I follow the CBD, let's follow the CBD. Close the stop the Doppler, please. Let's follow the CBD. I'm gently going forward. Here you can see there is a stricture. See this? This is a stricture. The CBD becomes narrow here. You can see the stricture? Yeah. Yes, we can see that. And you can see that the SMV is above it. This is the superior mesenteric vein above it. Is, is that clear? Yes. So this is the bile duct stricture in the head of the pancreas, SMV above it. If we now go a little clockwise here, so we have seen the head of the pancreas from the stomach, we have seen a dilated bile duct and we are seeing superior mesenteric vein, we follow it back, you will see the confluence. See the confluence? This is the confluence and the portal vein. And if I go posterior, you are seeing the pancreatic duct. Can you see the pancreatic duct? Yes. If you can, uh, yeah. Freeze it please. So this is the pancreatic duct. We measure it. 5.3. So we have a double duct sign here. CBD and PD both dilated. So if we trace this PD forwards towards the head of the pancreas, you, you see again it stops here. See this? Stop, so there seems, seems like there's some hypoid core mass yeah, you're causing right. the obstruction, you're right? right? You're right. So this is the PD and you have a lesion in the head of the pancreas. Mm. So the, the, the message I'm trying to convey is, 
if you follow the anatomy, most of the structures you can see from the stomach, most of the structures, head of the pancreas, SMB, SMA, and of course, our area of interest, that is aorta. So I come back to the liver. This is the hilum. Now, liver is anterior. I want to go to the aorta. All I have to do is turn posterior. So I have turned a little clockwise and I am at the aorta. Now we have to find the celiac axis. We follow it. There. So, so this is a celiac can you make it big? Yeah. Make it a little big. That's the celiac axis. Mm. Let's make it big and try to see some ganglia. I made the picture a bit big and I think we are seeing uh, Hello? Kitano? Yeah. Uh, you agree that, you see, this is a celiac. Uh, yeah, the, yes, ganglia yes. Ganglia should yes, be there here. Yes, one. yes, yes. That is a celiac, celiac yeah, ganglia. Easily visualized. So we are lucky here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See this? This is ganglia. Ganglia, yes. Yeah. So this is the celiac axis and we are seeing the ganglia. So our job is easy now. Yes. We inject. We inject. Yes. Okay. Very nice demonstration of the ganglia. Thank you. I think we are lucky. <laughs> so what we are using is a 22 gauge cook needle. Do you usually 20 gauge needle? Uh, normal, 22 gauge. 22? Yes. Because we are not injecting anything which is very viscous or... Uh, so, we lock it here, if you can show it. I think there are a lot of people who are doing basic EUS here. So, you lock it here and then there is this lock which prevents the needle from going in too much. I leave it free, but in the beginning don't do that. We bring it out. Check that it is coming out easily. You can see the needle coming out. Shall I magnify it? Yeah, you can see okay. the needle coming out. Is, is the needle clear? Yeah, we can see the needle tip. Yeah, yeah. this is the needle. Yeah? So this is the needle. Once the needle has come out, we have to target it in the direction of the ganglia. Little bit movement, withdrawal. And we try to see whether we are in the right direction. This looks okay. Yes, uh, yes. I am in the ganglia. Yeah. You can see that? Tip of yes, the needle yes, here. The tip of the needle already in the ganglia. Yes. 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 So now what we'll do is that a needle, we have very good assistants here who have already primed the needle. <laughs> it's, it's important to prime, otherwise air will go. So now, now what are you injecting? They know everything. I don't have to tell them. So they are injecting bupivacaine 0.25. 0.25. With five mil. Um, five mil. Five mil. Yes. A mixture with the absolute yes. alcohol. Getting white now. You can yeah, see it yes. white, getting white. Yes. How many mils we have injected so far? Enough, okay. enough, 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 enough. Because we are going into the ganglia, we don't have to inject too much. Okay. Mm. So just inject little. Um, inject maybe, yeah. This way you can inject 2 ml. Two mil. Ethanol. Then before the injection of the um, uh, 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 and and uh, ethanol, we will prime the needle with normal saline. Yes, yes. And yes. then after the injection, we will push the remaining through inside the needle with normal saline. Again. Yes, you are so right. So that right. um, the absolute amount are all go into the glandular water than left in the needle. Yes, yes. Now let us check: Are we in or are we out? We are still in. Okay, now we are injecting alcohol. Okay. Yes. Inject about 3 4 cc's. Three, two, four, Let us see what happens. How many volume do you inject for each ganglia? I think uh, this is a bigger ganglia. We can probably inject 5 6 cc. Normally, 1 or 2 cc's is enough if it is a small ganglia. Now, you see here, see this? Yes. Yes. It's becoming white, the whole area. Yes, whole area is getting white. Yeah. yeah. I think this is very good. Yes. This, this patient will get good relief. Mm -hmm. You see the whole ganglion has become white. Looking good. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See this. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent assistance, I must say. Very good. Three CC. Two more. 
cleaned them up. Okay. What do you say, uh, Masa? Is it enough? Yes, I think enough. Huh? Two or three you know, is enough. Okay, so we stop. So this is the easiest procedure to perform for those who are starting interventions. So for this case, you do one side or bilateral? No, if you see ganglia, inject into the ganglia. That is, oh. that is what I feel. Hmm. Uh, don't go here and there. Here we are lucky we saw the ganglia. <laughs> if we had not seen the ganglia, we would have debated one side or two side. My personal preference is one side. Um, I am not a very big fan of two side because I don't know where I'm injecting. Frankly, I like to see. I like to see where where I'm injecting. I'm a little scared of injecting here and there. Where you find out the second one? Do but, you inject? But Kitano is very aggressive. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> okay, so any questions before I withdraw? We have some very interesting cases to show you after this. Oh, yes. Are we going to do the FNAC of this patient? Uh, already proved. Mm. Already proved. So I don't have to do FNA. So, Dr. Dia, so. Uh, Let's say um, after ganglion injection, if, for example, we are uh, watching for you know drop in blood pressure, other changes in the yes, yes. autonomic functions. Yes. So, what? How long should we monitor for? I think two hours is enough. Keep okay. the patient two hours under observation. If there is no fall, there is not going to be a fall. Actually, the fall comes pretty early, within the first hour or so. If, if there is going to be, and it's a good sign. Some people say if there is orthostatic hypotension, means you have hit the ganglia. So, uh, and most of the times it is harmless. So I'm taking out this needle now. So in your experience, is a troublesome diarrhea after this procedure common? No, 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 no. no. Um, I, I haven't seen, but it has been described in the literature. So perhaps we can go to the history of the next patient? Yes, yes. And then uh, Dr. Tia can go to the next room. So I'm withdrawing the scope. Okay.